Yo, what is up, everybody, and welcome to my, I believe, my first uh, rankings video of the year. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a pretty simple theme. Can anyone keep up with Bama? That, that's really the theme for this year. Like, that's what we're looking at. Can anyone actually compete with the Alabama Crimson, Crimson Tide? We have we're th two teams get thrown around, Ohio State and Georgia. Those are the two teams that are typically, if anyone's going to do it, those are the two that will do it. But that's kind of looking at like these are my initial rankings. These are who I think have the best chance to go out there and beat Bama. Will I do ultimately it happens? We'll see. We'll see if we ever cross that road. We'll cross it. But um, yeah, no. Uh, welcome to the video. If you're new here, please uh, leave a like, subscribe. It would mean the world to me. I would only do it if you enjoy the videos. Um, yeah. So starting off, number one, Alabama Crimson Tide. As like if there's anybody else there. You better be an Ohio State fan, I, or Ohio State or Georgia fan, I guess. Like that's pretty much the only logical conclusion, or just like have Georgia there because they won the national championship last year. Those are the only conclusions that you can really have. Is if you're a fan of these top tier teams, or you just respect it, put Georgia number one. But it, what is, in all reality, Alabama, Alabama is the number one team in the country. They are the best, and they have the highest win trophy winner. They have potentially the best player on, de on not even on defense, the entire game. Like, then they have the best coach ever in Nick Saban. So, yeah, Alabama's number one. That's just what it is. Alabama's number one. Number two is Ohio State. They have potentially the best offense in college football, potentially the best quarterback. That one, a bit more up for debate between uh, CJ Stroud and Bryce Young. But then you have Jackson Smith and Jigwe. You have uh, Marvin Harrison. You have Travion Henderson, a very good offensive line. Ryan Day as your play caller. This team is stacked offensively. They are absolutely fantastic. And then you go and you get Jim Knowles to be your defensive coordinator. This team looks poised to make the... Uh, they look like they're going to make the college football playoff. They look like they're going to compete. Um, and you got the chip on their so shoulder from last year. Like, losing that Michigan game, that hurt. That one hurt them. Ohio State got some stuff to prove. They're in here at number two. At number three, the Georgia Bulldogs. The three teams I've mentioned, the, the, the Ohio State, Georgia, they're the two that give them the best shot. Georgia obviously just won the national championship and then lost pretty much their entire defense. Had the number one overall pick. Lose Jordan Davis, lose Quay Walker. So many more that I just, I know I just can't, they're not in my head at the moment. But the offense is still alive. They still have probably the best tight end room in the country. Um, I think they have the most talented tight end. I'm blanking on his name at the moment. But um, Stetson Bennett as it remains at quarterback. That's huge. And you, know, you still have Kirby Smart. You still have a very talented defense. Looking at Jalen Carter, who might be a, a top five pick going into going into this next, next year's draft. Georgia is still a very talented team. Yes, they lost quite a bit of production. It's... Like we said, it's still Georgia, okay? They ha they will have a very good defense. Kirby Smart will be a very fantastic coach. Uh, Georgia in at number three. Utah at four. When you look at return production, they are one of the best among these top teams um, in production returned. Uh, Cameron Rising at quarterback is fantastic. Their defense, I I'm liking their defense coming into this year. Um Utah, to me, they just they look like the fourth best team. You've got the returning uh, per, returning production from last year, which was already a Rose Bowl team, which then lost to Ohio State, who we have ranked number two though. So I, I they look like a top top four team. Look like to me at the moment they are that uh, they are that uh, last play uh, playoff team. If I if I had to give my prediction, I know the College Game Day guys gave theirs. Desmond, whatever you're on, buddy, that's. Something something strong there. But, um, yeah, no, Utah looks like that fourth-best team to me. They've got their team production. They've got the chemistry. They're coaching. I love their coach, uh, coaching staff. So, yeah, Utah at number four. Michigan State at five is another team that, like, yeah, th you, like, they lost to Son Haskins. They lost Aiden Hutchinson, David Ajabo. And they are still a top-five team in college football. All right? I, I don't particularly care. Um, their defense under Jim Harbaugh will be fantastic again. Their offense, they still have their two starting quarterbacks, I guess we can say, in Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy. They still will have a strong running game. They still have a very good offensive line. Receivers, eh, we'll see. 
but uh, this defense, I do expect to still stay, still stay strong. I expect them to perform really well. I, this, to me, this looks like the fifth best team in college football. That's why they're here. Number six, I, I think the most popular dark horse, yet still technically a dark horse, I think, uh, is North Carolina State. I am so high on Devin Leary. And perhaps the only thing I'm even higher on is the potential of this defense. They returned, like, again, returning production. I think they, like I mentioned with Utah State being one of the best, I think NC State is the best. They're probably not the, they probably don't, the official number one best. But in terms of, like, returning production among these top 25 teams, I think they're number one. And they were so good last year. They only had nine wins, missed out on a bowl game. But, um, Again, you return you return this much production, and this much successful production, is the big part of that. NC State, I, I think, has a chance to to knock in. Uh, to, to uh, I can't think of a great word to put in here. I think they have a good chance of uh, making it into the playoffs when it's all said and done. Uh, moving on, Texas A&M at number seven. I don't know what to do, but they finally named their starting quarterback in Haynes King. I was like, that was one of my biggest concerns was if you're going to have a quarterback battle throughout the year, which they might. If Haynes King sucks, Max Johnson's right there, and they have the uh, the freshman in there as well. Um, but then, again, they're an 8-4 and four team. Like, that's what they have been the last couple of years. So if it ha- And I think this is one of their their least talented teams, um, which which isn't really saying much. This is still a overly fantastic, uh, fantastically talented. I just I don't know what to do with them. That they figured out their quarterback, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him here at seven, ahead of Clemson, who I, who technically have their quarterback figured out, but in reality I don't think they do. DJ is not the guy. K. Klubnik, as soon as he starts, he will be the guy. The Clemson will be a different team. I hope. Um, if K. If K. Klubnik, um, that's, that's, yeah, uh, if he is that guy. Um, then Clemson has a very good shot of making the playoffs. This defense is talented. Will Shipley's back. This offensive line, very good. Like, the talent is there. You just need the guy behind center to make it happen, and it's not DJ. It's, it's just, it's not. But, um, yeah, Clemson's still a very good team. Number nine, Arkansas. Probably higher than most people would have would have them. But this offense, Sam Pittman has done a fantastic job. K.J. Jefferson looks like a beast. At first, I was worried. Traylon Burks, gone. How are you going to re- replicate that? You're not going to be able to re- replace that production that he had. But from everything I've heard, these wide receivers might be one of the best position groups on this Arkansas team. Their defense is playing fantastic in spring. I'm going to put Arkansas here. This might be a big one. I was like, one you're not really expecting. I'm going Arkansas at number nine. Just slightly ahead of Baylor, um, I think Dave Aranda is one of the premier coaches in college football. I, I think he's one of the best. His defenses are always there; to, they're always ready to compete. They're always there. His offenses—they're just—they're ba- solid. And I was about to say basic, which fundamentally they are, but um, they're solid. They get—they get the job done. The defense is the pride of this team, and, and I think that will continue into 2022 as well. Where Dave Aranda, I, I think. He will he will do a fantastic job with this team, um, yeah, carrying them to a top ten spot right now. At number eleven, another one typically ranked a little lower, and that's Michigan State. I think the biggest turnoff is they lose Kenneth Walker. I, th- I think that's the biggest turnoff of Michigan State. No way they can produce what maybe possibly could, should, up for debate should have been a Heisman ca- a Heisman uh, candidate, but for sure a Heisman caliber player in Kenneth Walker. And they, they can. They did. Uh, this team is pr- probably more talented than last year's team. Uh, you still have Peyton Thorne as your quarterback. You, you this defense starts spitting. Looks elite. This looks like one of the best defenses in college football, in my opinion. But um, yeah, Mel Tucker has f- done a fantastic job. No, they might not be as heavy of a as, uh, of a run team as they were last year. They don't need to be. All right, Peyton Thorne looks great. Their receiving core, I forgot his name, but they have this uh, stud rec- at receiver who looks good. I like this Michigan State team a lot. Unfortunately, just falling out, um, outside of my top 10, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they make their way in, into the top 10 at some point this year. 
At number 12, Notre Dame. In a very similar predicament with Texas A&M. The only problem is they haven't solved their quarterback issues. Marcus Freeman, new head coach. And then, um, forget his full name, but um, listen, ah, that's going to kill me. Because I like this dude a lot, but I forgot his name. The, the Notre Dame predicament. They get ranked high. They lose. Which, my mic that feels weird. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, yeah, they, they get ranked high. Number five in the AP poll. They get placed against Ohio State. They lose. They get they get knocked down to outside the top ten or around there. And they say, oh, they were overrated. But then they do exactly what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to lose to Ohio State. Um, so just a simple solution. Have them ranked. I don't think they are a top five program, let alone even top ten. All right. Show me your quarterback can play football, which is ironic coming from a Wisconsin fan. But, um, yeah, show me your quarterback can play football, and then we'll see. Like, if you, you look impressive, even if you lose, if you look impressive uh, in, the, in the loss against Ohio State, you might go up Notre Dame. You very well might move up. But until I see it, I just can't have them any higher. At number 13, as for mentioned, The Wisconsin Badgers. Yes, I'm a Wisconsin fan. I claim three teams. That is Wisconsin, New Mexico, and Texas Tech. Those are my those three teams I typically cheer for. Wisconsin being the the big one out of Wisconsin, my number one team. They are my guys. Braylon Allen is okay. Not the best running back in college football, but that's because you got players like Bijan Robinson. All right, but he is a top five back in college football. This is still a very solid Wisconsin team, regardless of Graham Mertz playing quarterback. And do I need? I do need to mention the defense. Oh gosh, this the, the number one defense in all of college football last year returned so so much production. This Wisconsin team looks dangerous. If Graham Mertz can just play competent quarterback, Wisconsin will be a top top tier team. Okay, maybe not top tier. But uh, they sh- though if Grammar can play competent quarterback, Wisconsin will make it to the Big Ten championship game. Probably won't win it, but um, they'll be up there ranked. They'll be ranked up there with Michigan State, and Michigan, and it's just all riding on the shoulders of can Grammar play quarterback. But a team that has a quarterback is the Tennessee Volunteers. I have them in here at 14th, behind this just explosive offense, just waiting to ignite. Hendon Hooker leading a stacked Volunteers offense. Defense, I got some question marks. But if you're looking for a Wake Forest replica, this is that. Tennessee has it, maybe not the exact same like place, but an offense that is just going to explode and probably a slightly better defense. Um, but I, I love Hendon Hooker. I love um, this Tennessee team, as you can see from a 14th ranking, which they typically, like, I don't even think they're ranked in the AP poll. But, um, yeah, no, I, I really love this Tennessee team. I love this offensive potential. That's why they're ranked uh, top 15. And rounding up, rounding off or up, what are we going to say here? Rounding up the top 15, Oklahoma State Cowboys. My biggest knock on them is that they lose um, Jim Knowles as DC. That's my biggest knock. All right, because outside of that, it's pretty much the same team. All right, again, we talked about our training production. I promise this will probably what. Actually, no, it won't be because they're playing crappy teams all next week. This will be one of the few times we stop we talk about returning production. Sorry, just make it through this video, and we'll be fine throughout the rest of the year. Okay, if, if you hate returning production, just make it through the video. Oklahoma State, they return, at least to my knowledge, a lot of a lot of uh, solid players. Pretty much, it seems to me a very similar team outside of losing Jim Knowles. Um. Uh, Spencer Sanders is I, at quarterback. He's fine. He'll get the job done. And the ranking kind of respects that. It's like, it's a quarterback that won't always lose you game. Like, he won't always win you games. He might lose you a game or two. But this is still a very solid team. The defense, even without Jim Knowles under Mike Gundy, is going to be fantastic. So they're in here at 15. At 16, their Big 12 counterpart, the Oklahoma Sooners. And I, just, I don't know what to do 
because Oklahoma, their offense has – like, that's what they've been known for. That's how they made the play. Like, that is – that is Oklahoma has been their offense. Then Lincoln Riley's like, I, I'm out. And then Brent Venables is in, which is fantastic. Brent Venables is going to be amazing, especially as they transition to the SEC. It's going to be huge. Except for I don't know how it impacts this year. You got Dylan Gabriel at quarterback, who should be great, would think. But I also don't know. Lincoln Riley's gone. Don't remember if they're OC State or not. I used to know. Now I'm blanking on it. I just, I don't know. This Oklahoma Sooners team, there's a lot of potential to be great. I, I just don't know. So I, I think they'll be good. I think this defense will be good enough. Um, to carry into a top 16 ranking. I, th- I think they are the 16th best team in college football. I think Dylan Gabriel will will help lead the offense. Um, I, I like him enough, top 16. I just I can't justify putting anybody else ahead of him. So here's Oklahoma. Right below them, USC. I can't justify putting USC ahead of Oklahoma. I, I just, in my head, I can't do it. All right, like the... Sure, it might be Oklahoma's offense with Jordan Addison. But now you're in California. Like, so many new players. The chemistry is just going to be off. This team isn't going to look well-polished for the first couple weeks. They, they just won't. Um, and if they do, then, oh, crap, this team's going to be amazing. But I just, I don't see them look like there will be simple pl- simple plays messed up. Sure, they might put up 50 points. Who are they even playing first? Whoever it is, they might put up 50 points in week one. And still, I will I will say they might not look completely polished despite putting up 50 points. But, um, yeah, they're playing rest. They might p- legitimately put up 50 points and still not look polished. Because um, the potential for this team is off the chart. We get it. We know it. Just, I, I don't know... I don't fully like it, um, at least right now. Putting them any higher than this just due to everyone just... It's a big melting pot right now. That's pretty much what it is. Now, for Miami, it's a little different, but similar because you got a new head coach, but you got a very very similar roster returning, uh, specifically Tyler Van Dyke. And I just... I think... Cristobal's too good of a coach. Tyler Van Dyke's too good of a quarterback to have them ranked lower. So I got Miami here at 18. I like them. I, I think they're going to compete in the ACC. I, I'm i a huge fan of the ACC this year. Specifically, the quarterback play is going to be fantastic from that conference. Yeah, Miami, I think they have a chance to go ahead and put put some wins together. They got a very good team. They got a very good coach. Hopefully, Cristobal learns from what he had in Herbert and like actually lets Tyler Van Dyke, like, explode you know like what you would do with um with a high top tier caliber quarterback should be common sense enough but we'll, we'll see what chris Ball ends up doing that could that could potentially hurt him but i i think this will be a very good miami team now two more overlooked teams in my opinion i rounding out my top 20 talk about them both here because i'm videos already kind of pretty long penn state and mississippi state um. Yeah, I. Sean Clifford is back. Will Rogers is back for those two teams, respectively. I'm gonna try and focus on Penn State, because otherwise I'm just gonna confuse people because I jump around a lot. Try and focus on Penn State here. Sean Clifford is back. James Franklin is back. Yes, they weren't great last year. I don't care. This isn't last year. Looking at them this year, they look like a top twenty team. So here is a top twenty rank. They they look the part of a top twenty team. The only thing holding them back is what they have done the last two years. That's it. The talent on this roster is phenomenal. Like it, to me, it looks like a, a the 19th best team in college football right now. That's what it looks like. So that's where I'm putting them. All right. If you don't like it, dang, that sucks. Just go look at the AP poll. That'll make you happy. The Mississippi State at number 20. This team has the potential to just skyrocket. Like, Will Rogers is a beast at quarterback. Um, granted, now that I start to think about it, they probably actually won't skyrocket because they have one of the toughest schedules in college football. 
So, in all honesty, they'll probably finish as at best a nine and three team, maybe ten and two. But that that's going to be tough to do. Um, but I got him here at twenty, just because again, like Penn State, when looking at it, this looks like the twentieth best team in college football. So here is a top twenty ranking. Like that is that's how it, it works in my mind. You at least in week one, you look like a the top twenty program. Here's a top twenty ranking. Will Rogers is back. Mike Leach in this air raid offense is going to look fantastic. I have him in here at 20. 21, Cincinnati. Uh, yes, they lost, again, like Georgia, their entire defense. Unlike Georgia, this isn't an SEC powerhouse. Instead, it's just Luke Fickle, which is no shot at Luke Fickle. You're amazing, and that's why you're ranked 21st. It's because he's done a very good job recruiting. Uh, I think Ben Barch, I think, is his last name. Back at quarterback, uh, was there under Ritter, left for last year. Now he's back. Uh, got a, Pretty much he got a year of playing uh, at Eastern Michigan. Comes back. I think he will be a very good leader for this Bearcats offense. The running game also looking promising. Their defense, it'll be tough, but I, I'm trusting a Luke Fickle run defense here to be, to be good. I got him ranked at 21. At 22, the Oregon Ducks, led by Bo Nix. And that hurts my head because I don't know what to do with them. I want to say they'll be good because this defense is fantastic. You got Justin Flo and Noah Sewell uh, leading leading the charge there. Two of the best linebackers in the country. Like, they're just absolutely phenomenal. And then you have Bo Nix at quarterback. And it's like the potential for Bo Nix was to be a top, top five overall pick in the draft. That's obviously not it. He will win you games. He will also lose you games. Like, he will make fantastic plays. Like, holy cow, this dude's, like, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And then you'll just look at plays like, what the heck was that? So I think fair, have him at 22nd. I think that's fair. The defense looks great, though. And you lose your head coach, so that kind of hurts. But this defense looks great, so I have him at 22nd. Houston. The offense looks fantastic. Clayton Thune looks amazing. Maybe it's Thune. Sorry, my bad. But um, I typically won't talk about betting, but uh, their odds to win the American looking pretty nice. That that might be a good one to, to jump on if you're if you're into that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, th- this Houston offense is going to be fantastic. Their defense just needs to play decently, and they'll win a bunch of games. So Houston in at twenty three. Similarly with BYU, Jaron Hall at quarterback. This team looks amazing. Kalani Sitaki, fantastic coach. A lot of trust in Jaron Hall for me on this one. I, I, that's what it is. Um, also, I, just looking at this, I don't trust enough any other like any other teams to put them ahead of here. So I trust BYU enough. I trust Kalani Sitaki enough uh, to go ahead and have him here at 24th. And then at 25th, my long shot kind of is Texas. This offense looks like it should be fantastic. All right, you got Quinn Ewers as your quarterback. Under Sarkeesian, with B. John Robinson, Jaleel Billingsley at tight end. This this offense looks poised to be dynamic. I, it's going to look amazing. And then you got DeMarvin Overshawn on the on the defense. That's the only name I can name at the moment. But it looks like, like Texas... I think looks like a top 25 team. Again, there's nobody else I'd rather have in here. So here's Texas. I get I've used that explanation a lot. I'm sorry, but that's the justification for it pretty much is Texas looks like a top 25 team to me. Like you have Quinn Ewers, who can be one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen under one of the best offensive minds in college football with one of the best players in college football already in Bijan Robinson. I this this offense looks like it's going to be fantastic. And I'm putting a lot of stake into that, and that's why Texas is here. But yeah, that'll wrap it up for me, I think. I, video's long enough as it is. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, a subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If not, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure I'll see you all later. Um, yeah, have a nice day, everyone. See you all later. Adios.